Hey everybody, this is my review of the Hawkeye finale as well as kind of a retrospective on the season as a whole. Okay, so I was worried going into this finale because I said in my previous reviews, they've got so many characters, so many storylines to really resolve or to push forward. And I was worried that with only six episodes, with only one episode remaining, they wouldn't be able to do that in a satisfying way. I I did really enjoy this episode. I thought it was a satisfying enough finale, but I did have issues with it. It did fall into that trap. A lot of storylines were underserved. I do have a lot of issues and problems with this episode. I did enjoy it. I thought there were some things that were fantastic, um, but some were just not executed nearly as well as they could have been. Um, I don't think this episode breaks the curse of weaker Marvel TV show finales, even though I enjoyed it overall. We'll talk about what I liked, what I didn't like. This has been a complaint against Marvel for so long, which is the Marvel's third act problem, where they just have so many things going on, uh, and it ends with a giant CGI battle, and it's just, because it always has to set up the next thing, it never is a satisfying finale. Um, That is something that, like, for movies, the third act problem, it's an issue, but it can also, it's not a big deal, because let's just say a Marvel movie has a lackluster third act. If the rest of the movie is good, you can kind of overlook that. But if a TV show has a bad finale, it really can leave a bad taste in your mouth for the whole TV show because you're invested week by week and you're waiting and it's separate episodes. So it's a much bigger deal for TV than it is for movies. And I do think Marvel definitely needs to workshop their finales and how much story they're trying to tell in six episodes. Uh, They're biting off a lot more than they can chew. And I think either they need to just tell less story in six episodes or increase the episode length. I think this could have been better with nine episodes, giving more time to some of these storylines that maybe were not served as well as they could have been. But um, but let's really get into it. Let's start with the direction. I thought it was really great. Bird and Bernie are killing it. I'd like to see them stick around in the MCU. The way the action is shot really elevates it. Um, The choreography is fine, but it's just not movie level. We've seen that the TV shows fight scenes aren't nearly as good as the movies, but the way they're being shot in this show is elevating them which I like. There's lots of memorable shots, lots of dynamic camera movements, the way Kate versus Yelena's, uh, their fight scene was shot, the horizontal panning against the building, Yelena jumping out the window, the upside down shot, that one take slow motion with Kate and Clint fighting together in frame. All of that's fantastic. And the cinematography is really great. And I'm really loving how that is. So cinematography, direction, great. The action was one of my favorite parts of the episode. Um, It was memorable. It was great. I have some minor issues with it, though, in a few scenes. Let's talk about that, or let's just mention the Kate versus Kingpin fight is where most of my issues with this episode come from. We'll talk about that near the end. Maya versus Kazi was a little bit disappointing. The choreography was a little lackluster. I was disappointed by that. But then we get a little bit of Clint versus Kazi, which was fine. Uh, Yelena versus Kate was amazing. Not even talking about their chemistry. The actual fight itself was so well shot. It was really fun. The choreography was good. There was some cool parkour. You get some uh, Kate versus the tracksuits, which was fun. The best part being, of course, Jack Duquesne coming in and us really getting to see his skills with the sword. That was awesome. Um, What else? Uh, Of course, there's the big ice skating rink scene, which was fantastic some of the best, one of the best fight scenes of the show, one of the best MCU Disney plus fight scenes with all the trick arrows, with the two Hawkeyes working together, the way it was shot, that scene was just fantastic. Uh, I loved it. It's going to be one of those scenes that I feel like is going to become an MCU classic, kind of an iconic scene. It was just really well done, really memorable. That fight scene really carried the episode. It was so good. It was so well shot and so good looking and just really great. And then you have Yelena versus Clint, which again, I loved I, I always love the Black Widow choreography because there's always some really cool, inventive or weird and interesting moves in there. And I thought this was no different. That fight scene was fantastic. The emotion behind that fight scene was fantastic. And we'll spend a lot of time on that. Um, so I really did love the action in this episode. I thought it was fantastic. The music was awesome. The Christmas music timing was impeccable. The Christmas music choices was impeccable. The Hawkeye themes, the Black Widow themes, all that was fantastic. I loved the music blasting when it's the slow motion shot of Kate and Clint fighting together as a team, all that, that's going to be like an iconic scene. That was fantastic. Costume design. I really love the new costumes. I love Clint's costume, kind of a subtle nod to his comics costume. But then I also love the way Kate's looks. And I think they both looked awesome in combat. Talking about the characters and the character arcs, 
this is where the episode fell flat for me. It fell into the trap. I was worried for it, but to a much, I will say to a lesser extent than Falcon and Winter Soldier, it had so many characters, so many storylines to serve that a lot were well done, but a lot were underdeveloped um, while others got most of the time. I like where they went with all the characters. I like all the ideas. It all makes sense, but it just feels like they're underdeveloped or I just wish we had gotten more starting with Eleanor Bishop. Of course we get the reveal. She's working with Kingpin to pay off her husband's debt. Um, I like it. I like what they did with her character. I like Kate, her conversation with Eleanor um, before Eleanor's arrested, all that. I do like it. And I like the idea. I just wish we got more. It felt a little anticlimactic because the show was building up to this and uh, it was just kind of, okay, that's it. It feels like there should have been more. I would have liked to see a scene with Kate and Eleanor really talking about what Eleanor had to do, why she felt like she was protecting Kate, uh, what she really did. Like, we don't really know that much. And uh, I like what we got, but it just felt a little bit underserved and a little bit underdeveloped. Um, and that's how I feel about Eleanor Bishop in this episode. But uh, Vera Farmiga, as always, great performance. Uh, she's a great actress. I do hope for a Hawkeye season two. Um, I would love to see a lot more development of both Jack Duquesne and Eleanor Bishop. Uh, moving on to Jack Duquesne. I loved him in this episode. I love the scene when Kate and Eleanor in the kitchen, they storm off, they're arguing, and uh, Jack comes in completely clueless. And Tony Dalton's line delivery of, I feel like I'm missing something, was flawless. And then Tony Dalton in this show has been phenomenal because the character successfully in the beginning seemed like maybe a villain. He seemed very suspicious, very mustache twirly. But I love how it's just revealed that he's just a goofball and he's just a charming goofball. And Tony Dalton plays that excellently. Um, and again, I also love seeing him with the sword. Seeing him joining the fight was an awesome moment. One thing I do wish was we got some sort of explanation, some sort of even just one line to explain why he's so good with the sword. Maybe that's something where they have a pass for him in mind that maybe they'll reveal in a possible Hawkeye season two. If they're holding out information for that, then I'm fine with it. But if we never get any information for why he's so good with the sword, I'll be a little bit disappointed. Even just one line, maybe just something like he used to be a huge fencer, just something, one simple line to explain it. I'd like to hear, but, um, but that's how I felt about Jack. I thought he was awesome and charming and hilarious. Now moving on to Maya Lopez, and then I'll talk about Kazi. I'll mention Kazi. Um, Maya was the character who really suffered the most in this episode for me. Here's why. Every single move, every single thing they did with her character, I liked, and it was compelling, and it made sense. But the problem is that it was too compelling, and it felt like, it really feels like what they're doing with Maya is main character type stuff. It feels like this is a really compelling, interesting story that has been shoved into the C-plot of somebody else's show. So it's just lacking a weight. It's lacking a meaning behind it because it just doesn't feel as important or meaningful as everything else going on. And it's underdeveloped um, because, okay, basically her story in this episode is she starts out with her faith shaken from last episode's reveal. You can see it in her face as she speaks with Kingpin. She asks for time off. Um, she asks for a few days off. We see her packing up her apartment. She goes to confront Kazi and she feels very betrayed. She goes to see where his loyalties truly lie. And when it's revealed to be Kingpin, she kills him. And then she goes to confront Kingpin and then she shoots him, ripped directly out of the comic books. So all this makes sense. All this is really great character work. It's just underdeveloped because first of all, Maya's relationship with Kazi didn't get nearly enough screen time or development so that when she kills him, there's not enough weight behind that fight. There's not enough emotion behind that fight. Um, and it just doesn't have the impact it should have. And then same thing with Maya's relationship with Kingpin. We should have seen more of their relationship instead of the show just telling us. We should have seen him being her uncle more so that when she confronts him, it feels so much more powerful, so much more emotional because all the scenes they had of her in this episode felt like, wow, these should be emotional, powerful scenes. The climax of her own show with a lot of weight behind it because she cares about these characters and she's learned they betrayed them and she has to confront them but instead of being this really emotional moment like it really should be, it, it's underdeveloped and it's underserved because instead of being the main story of its own show, which it should be, it's pushed to the side and it's like the, the third most important storyline in somebody else's show. And, uh, 
And it's a bummer because she's such a good character. She's so interesting. All the places they're taking her are interesting. She's a compelling character, but her story is so compelling that it feels like it should be its own show instead of the C plot of somebody else's show. And it's, it's really making her storyline feel a lackluster and it's not living up to the potential because there's just not enough time to put the weight behind it, the emotion behind it that it very easily could have because it's all really interesting stuff. Um, and this is credit for Kevin Feige because I bet you he watched this show. He saw the same exact thing and that's why they're giving her a spinoff show. And I'm hoping in her spinoff show, they can retroactively add more weight to these scenes with flashbacks explaining more and showing more of her relationship with Kazi. And then of course with Kingpin. Um, and I'm hoping I have a lot of hope for her show. And I think it's going to be great because uh, she is a great character who is just very underserved in this episode. And that's how I feel about Maya. The acting was fantastic. Alakwa Cox and Frafri were both great. No issues with that. This finale did disappoint me with their storyline, but it also gives me hope for the Echo Show that they can retroactively make it better and add more weight to it because there's so many places you can go with this character. This is a really great character. So I am excited to see where they go in the future and how they fix this. Moving on from Maya and Kazi to Wilson Fisk to Vincent D'Onofrio. And you know, I was really disappointed with Kingpin in this. I had heard all this great stuff about how he's so menacing, how he's so scary, how he's such a great villain. And maybe I let my expectations get too high, but I went to this episode and I just found him really lackluster. I didn't feel any threat. I just thought he was kind of a goofball. He was just, I didn't buy him as this character. I didn't buy him as a crime boss. I didn't find him very scary. I didn't find him very menacing. Vincent D'Onofrio was fine. I like how he kind of had a little twitch. That was something that was a little menacing, but I have yet to see what made Kingpin so special in Daredevil. And I'm really hoping the Echo Show can fix that because he's definitely not dead. He'll definitely be the main antagonist of the Echo Show. Um, and I really hope they can fix what they did with Maya and Kazi and Kingpin in that Echo Show. All three of those characters, I think, uh, deserve a lot more than what they got in this finale. Moving on from Wilson Fisk, from Vincent D'Onofrio to Florence Pugh to Yelena Belova. I feel like a broken record. I'm just going to have to say this every time she appears in anything. She was phenomenal. She is by far my favorite part of this episode. She is so good. Her storyline is so well done. It, it's interesting that I feel like it's almost a um, almost a tug of war between Yelena and Maya for who's going to get the most screen time, who's going to get the most development of their storylines. And uh, Yelena by far won in this episode. She was just so good. Her storyline was so well done. Okay, so let, let's just go through it. She starts at the party. She runs into Kate at the elevator. Uh, you can see her like, no, Kate, don't come in. Then Kate comes in. Kate's like, shows her costume. She presses all the elevator buttons. Their chemistry is fantastic. Uh, that was just hilarious. Florence Pugh is phenomenal. Her facial expressions, the annoyance all over her face when Kate comes in, her little quips, her jokes, her chemistry, her banter with Kate. It's so well executed. And then their conversations while they fight. Um, before she jumps out the window, Kate's stop making me like you. And Yelena's sorry, I can't help it. Um, all of that is just so fun. So it just leaves you with a big smile on your face. And then the actual jump out the window just looked awesome. Um, their dynamic is so good. Their chemistry is so good. I just want more. I want more of our new Hawkeye, our new Black Widow. Um, I think they're so good together. And I like seeing this origin story of how they meet. And I'd like to see their relationship grow um, and become a big part of the MCU because they're so good together and their chemistry is fantastic. And Florence Pugh just constantly proving how good she is, her versatility, because she's both this threatening, skilled Black Widow assassin, who's this hardcore, uh, experienced fighter, and she sells that, as well as just selling this goofy, quirky goofball who's just hilarious, and as well as just the dramatic uh, emotion behind this character. She's so good. And then later on, my favorite part of the episode, she comes in and attacks Clint. She asks him, she has Clint on the ground. She asks him what happened with Natasha. You can tell she's on the verge of tears. Clint tells her the truth and she refuses to believe it because it's so much easier to blame somebody, to have somebody to take your rage out on, to have a target, than to accept that the person you loved sacrificed themselves and that they chose to die, that they willingly left you. And that's what Elena's dealing with. And it's just really well done. And then their whole fight, 
it's it's almost an example of exactly what everything with Maya was missing. It's this emotion. It had weight, the emotion behind the fight, the acting, you felt the stakes, not just the fighting stakes, the emotional stakes. And that's what my, everything with Maya should have had in this episode, but didn't. And that's what Yelena had in this episode. You hear the desperation in Florence Pugh's voice. You hear her like um, on the verge of tears, how emotional this is for her. You see it on her face, her heavy breathing after every punch, her screams, her like guttural screams of rage and sadness, the pain in her voice um, as she's like, she's trying to die. She doesn't want to believe that, that Natasha sacrificed herself. And then she's so good. She's so good. And then she becomes so overcome with these feelings that she starts to beat up Clint. You hear the screams of pain behind each hit. It was so well acted. And then the moment where Clint does the black widow whistle just gives me chills. It's perfect. It's so well done. You see immediately on Yelena's face how that hits her. And then she asks Clint how he knows the whistle. He explains the scene was so good. He explains how Natasha always talked about Yelena, how Natasha loved Yelena, how Natasha always wanted to make sure Yelena was safe. You can see how it affects her. She starts to cry. The scene was so moving, so emotional. Uh, really, really great. Yelena still is in that denial phase. The same thing that Clint's been dealing with. Yelena saying, if she was there, she could have stopped it. She could have saved Natasha. And Clint tells her there's nothing she could have done. Natasha made her choice and that Yelena couldn't have changed it. And I love how Clint really starts to help Yelena through the pain, through the rage. Clint helps navigate her through the grief. He helps her start to accept what happened. Yelena's rage turns into sadness. She helps Clint up. She walks away. Clint really begins Elena on the path of healing. He helps her heal. And we'll talk about in the same way, while he's helping her heal, he's helping himself heal. And it's just so good, so well done, so well written, so well acted. Florence Pugh had to portray about every emotion in this scene, in this episode. And she really rose to the challenge. She was phenomenal. She managed to say so much with just her face and her eyes. Uh, everything with Yelena in this show was amazing. One of the best parts of the show. Um, she's just a standout in everything she's in. I cannot wait to see where Florence Pugh, where Yelena appears next. It's only a matter of time before she gets her own project and uh, she totally deserves it. She is phenomenal. She is so good. Um, I cannot say enough good things about her character and her performance. Uh, fantastic. Moving on to Jeremy Renner. Um, first thing we get with him, or I love that scene where we see Clint making the arrows with Kate. Uh, Hawkeye is just cool in this series. They've really made him cool. It's cool how he makes his own arrows, how he makes his trick arrows. Um, I love how he really embraces that they're partners. He says that, no, Kate, you're my partner. Your problem is my problem. That was fantastic. Every time throughout this episode where he mentors her is fantastic. They're fighting together is fantastic. This episode really pays off on everything they've been building towards on the Clint and Kate relationship. Uh, that was just handled so well in this show. I love how we've seen his guilt. We've seen how bad he feels over what he did in his past being Ronan, how he confronted his past metaphorically or symbolically last episode with Maya by helping somebody else who is dealing with the same thing he dealt with. He really confronts what he did and he can start to forgive himself because he's seeing that it's not really Maya's fault. She's being manipulated and he's kind of learning to forgive himself. And then I love him burning the Ronan suit at the end, really showing symbolically how he did horrible things and he definitely is never going to feel amazing about it. He's always going to feel bad about it, but he can now move past it. He's no longer hung up about it. He did those things. He's confronted it. He's dealt with his mistakes and now he's ready to fully move past it, which I think is awesome. Another great thing with his arc, every single thing he says to Yelena, he's also saying to himself, he's applying to himself. He's tearing up as he's saying it by helping Yelena. He's helping himself just like by helping Maya, he helped himself. He's helping Yelena get to a point of healing and he's helping heal himself talking about how there's nothing she could have done. Natasha made her choice. She chose to die. Uh, it's not his fault. It's not anything he could have done. And he's really helping move past that. He's letting go of his survivor's guilt. He's finally beginning to accept that she chose to die. There's nothing I could have done. It was her choice. And, um, and that scene was fantastic and amazing acting by Jeremy Renner as he tears up. And then that moment where Yelena says uh, she loved Natasha, that line delivery is heartbreaking and beautiful. And then the close up on Jeremy's face, as he said, he did too. Uh, that moment is phenomenal. It's so well done, so well acted. 
uh, just amazing. And this episode really pays off on Jeremy's or Clint's arc in both dealing with his past and also his grief over Natasha. So that was all fantastic. Seeing him reunited with his family was awesome. Bringing Kate along. The ending was awesome. Uh, Kate on the family farm. I'm sure he's going to train her. He finally accepts them as partners. Them working together was awesome. He was just fantastic. Jeremy Renner was fantastic. Um, and I really made Hawkeye a fantastic character. Kate Bishop in this episode was, again, was awesome. Her arc throughout the series is awesome. She's learning to be a superhero. Clint calls them partners in the beginning. She's touched. In the end of this episode, she really does kind of become a new Hawkeye. He compliments her at the end. When he compliments her, when he says he's so proud of her, that scene is fantastic. That's the really the payoff of the development of their relationship. And you really... Um, you believe that these two are now partners after everything they've been through all that, the way their progression of their relationship throughout the show pays off in this episode was phenomenal and really well done. Everything feels earned. It feels, uh, it feels good. It feels satisfying seeing them working together as a team. And then when she finally accepts responsibility and by arresting her mom, she learns that being a hero comes with hard choices, comes with sacrifices. Um, you have to do what's right, no matter the cost, no matter arresting her mom, stuff like that. This is the episode where Kate truly learns what it takes to be a hero. She truly becomes a hero and uh, she truly becomes, at least in my eyes, uh, maybe not the new Hawkeye, but a new Hawkeye. All that was great. I loved her conversation with Clint, explaining to Clint how he inspired her. That was fantastic. Her conversation with her mom at the end. Haley Steinfeld was fantastic. Her chemistry with both Clint and with the Elena. Everything was awesome. I loved the way they ended. Speaking of that, uh, there was the reveal that Linda Carlini, that Laura Barton was the S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. Uh, I love that. Some people were wishing for more, but I liked the way it was revealed. It was subtle. It wasn't a huge, huge reveal. It was just, look at this. Uh, this is what the watch was about. I really liked the way that was handled. Um, and I really did like the way this episode ended, at least with Kate, Clint, back at the family farm, all of that. And I really want a Hawkeye season two. I'd love to see it start off like at the family farm with Hawkeye training and mentoring Kate uh, to become the new Hawkeye. They kind of ended it in a perfect way where it could be, this could be it, it could be done, or they could go and they can do a season two easily and pick up where it left off. Um, and then of course, you know, Maya has her own show and she'll, she's probably going to split off and have her own show. And then Yelena, who knows what's going to happen with her. But um, I really did think that the ending of this episode was pretty satisfying Uh, at least that part of it. Moving on to some of my criticisms. I already talked about my criticism of the way Maya's storyline was handled. Some of the CGI was a little bit iffy in this episode, not a huge deal, but that's something I noticed. I talked about how I didn't love Kingpin in this episode. Another thing is the power scaling. Power scaling issues don't usually bother me because most of the time you can just head cannon around it. But, uh, But there was some weird moments where Kate Bishop just totally leveled up in this episode and uh, could just fight a lot better. And they didn't really explain why she just like was a lot better. And then she was trying to do, there was a couple of shots where she was trying to do like Black Widow takedowns, but but it it was like, it didn't look good because it was weirdly chopped up. There were like three cuts and it was just weirdly edited and it just looked pretty bad. And then everything with Kingpin, like having super strength, he's like shot, he's stabbed, he's run over, he's exploded. He's completely fine. And the way he just throws Kate around, I know it's comics accurate, I just, it did not work for me at all. The power scaling was really weird. And then just the suspension of disbelief was really weird with a lot of that, not even with the trick arrows or whatever, with the physics of this episode, there were so many stunts where people got hit and they went flying way more than anyone would ever go flying for like a kick like that. Even with Maya, uh, whenever she kicks, Kazi went flying way further than is like humanly possible. And then with Kingpin uh, throwing Kate around like she's weightless, it just, didn't work for me. It, it just really bothered me. And then the post credit scene. Uh, I mean, a lot of people were pissed off. I wasn't pissed off. Post credit scene is a bonus. It's not something you should expect. I don't consider the post credit scene something that factors into my view of the actual thing. It's just a tease for the next thing. But I will say this post credit scene, it was fine. I liked seeing more of Rogers the musical. It was disappointing, but it's not a big deal. It's not big enough to be a major criticism, but it was a little bit disappointing. Also, everything with the LARPers really didn't work with me in this episode. It was already kind of pushing it with me, having them kind of helping Hawkeye. Like, they're supposed to be firefighters and policemen, and they're, like, sneaking around this party, and, like, it was just it was just weird. And then 
And then when they come out and they're redirecting people and trying to help, and then they go back inside and come back out in their LARPer costumes, all that just really didn't work for me. And it came out as, it just was kind of cringy and uh, not great. But overall, I really enjoyed this episode, although I do have issues with it. I think it nailed everything with Clint, Kate, and Yelena especially, and I'm excited to see more of them in the future. It did kind of drop the ball on Maya and on Kingpin, but I'm hoping that's something they can fix in the Echo show, and I'm sure they will. Marvel has proven they're very good at that, Um, so I'm looking forward to that. I really love this episode. Looking back on the season as a whole, I loved this show. I loved Hawkeye. I loved the characters. I loved the acting. I loved the development of the characters. I loved the action. It was a, it was a really nice palate cleanser. It's going to be something very rewatchable. It was a fantastic show. Uh, I would probably give it a 9 out of 10 as a whole. The finale did drop the ball in some aspects, but looking at the show as a whole, it wasn't enough to ruin my enjoyment of the whole show, and I really did love a lot of what they did in the finale. So uh, I love this show so much. I love Hawkeye. I'm happy with it. I hope it gets renewed. I would love to see a Hawkeye season two. I'd love to see these characters more, and I'm excited to see where this all goes in the future. Uh, Let me know what you thought of this episode. Were you satisfied with this finale? Did you have the same problems I did? Or maybe not. Maybe you did feel like Maya's storyline had the right amount of weight behind it. Let me know what you thought. What did you think of the show as a whole? Where do you rank this with the other Marvel shows? You can leave a comment an email, a voicemail, or let me know in the form. All the links to do all those things are in the description. And uh, thank you so much for listening and have a good day.